try this again, guys. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Member Spotlight Podcast series. I'm your host, Community Manager Jordan, here with iTrick Bytes, and I'm super excited to see everybody. Um, we are going to get Mary Bates on here. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, don't understand what was going on, trying to still see if this works now. I see you guys are joining. All right, it is working. It is working. Let's hope that it will be going. Keep me going. All right. All right. Hey. We're good. Okay. Do not ask me what happened. Facebook hates one iTrek bites and two me. Because <laughs> it's yeah. always something every single week. Every single week. Oh, it's still know, awesome it's regardless. So. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Mary, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to all of our members that are on tonight and that are going to be listening to the podcast. Okay. Thank you for, um, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm actually pretty excited, although, you know, I, I feel a little bit nervous too, so um, bear with me. Um, I am Mary Bates, and um, I am a new member of iTrack Bites, but I really, really love the company, and I love everything that they're doing. Um, I've struggled with my weight for a very, very long time. And what I do know is that tracking is what works. So I track bites is right in the name. <laughs> um, it's, it's obviously so super important. And, and even throughout my entire journey, I know that tracking is and, and being accountable for your actions is, is really what um, helps in the process of everything. Yeah. So Mary, let's let, so you've lost over 140 something pounds, which is very like, I can't believe that. Like, can't believe that. I can't believe it. (laughs) Number two, you are very into that you've lost this naturally. And I applaud you for that because it wasn't no gimmick. It was, you tracked your food, you had it in your tracker and you lost weight. So let's start, Mary, if you don't mind, like let's start from the very beginning, way before you started Weight Watchers, way before you came to iTrack Bites, how was it for you in the past before you decided, hey, I'm ready to get this under control? Okay. So um, I was always overweight basically uh, my whole life. I had a pretty tumultuous um, childhood, um, basically starting with my father who died at the tender age of eight. And um, we weren't really allowed to kind of show our emotions and, you know, everybody deals with things in a different way. Um, but I dealt with it with food and, uh, food was my comfort. Food was all the loss that I was feeling at, you know, such a young age. And it just continued on with just a very hard childhood. Um, I basically started dieting in middle school um, because always whenever I saw the pediatrician and and things like that, they always mentioned that I was fat. I mean, there were certain doctors that told my mom to her face while I was sitting there that I was fat. Um, That's not a nice way to say things to children, (laughs) to to definitely to children. Um, And I do come from a bigger family who maybe did not have, who definitely did not have the education that they needed to know what it was like to eat healthy. So just a pediatrician telling my mom that I was fat or overweight or or I had to go on a diet um, wasn't helpful. You know, we never got set up with a nutritionist or or know how to eat. Um, You know, ethnically, my mother is um, is Hispanic Mm -hmm. and we ate a lot of, uh, you know, things that were not the best, that were high fat foods. And that were cheaper to prepare. And when like you're that. a lower income, yeah. And when you're a lower income family, you just you go to what you know. Um, rice is really cheap, and it's easy to feed um, your you know your children. Yeah. Um, but I do know now that healthy food can also be made um, and uh, in a cheaper way, like yeah. you know, um, oh, yeah. in a wallet conscious way. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you're not educated in that way, it, you know, it was difficult. And, um, I was telling Ben last night on the Monday meetings, which are awesome. (laughs) Um, I remember seeing a skinny girl in middle school or what I thought was tiny and thin, and she had a cucumber for lunch. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to have a cucumber every single day for a week and I'm going to lose weight. (laughs) Um, 
that didn't work out. <laughs> of course, no. um, you know, that's not, that's not easy. And that's obviously not the way to go about it. But already in middle school, like I was feeling the fat girl complex yeah. and um, tried to go about it in all the right ways. Cause I was uneducated and that yo-yo dieting leads to a lot of mental issues because you cannot sustain deprivation is not sustainable. Yes. And I didn't know any better. Like a diet deprives you of things that you want and things that you need and you cannot sustain that. So then you are not successful. Mm -hmm. You give up, you feel like a failure. You feel like you can never do it. You, you feel hopeless. Um, and that just started off so young and, um, you know, like more childhood trouble. And I reached my heaviest weight of 333 pounds as a junior as a junior in high school. Yep. And I remember um, going clothes shopping and getting a size 28 jeans that were stretched and they were too tight. Oh my God. And man, that still like sits with me. <laughs> That's oh, still yeah. such, a, such a memorable, you know, like such a memorable thing. Um, and it, it was just really, really hard. Um, and then when I removed myself some, some from some trouble, some situations when I yeah. was graduating high school, I did start to lose um, some weight because I wasn't really feeding myself uh, to, to comfort myself, but I was still heavy because again, I didn't have the education yeah. um, that I needed. Um, and then when I got divorced from my first husband in 2010, I was like, you know what? Number one, I'm gonna get sexy, number one. <laughs> <laughs> But also, um, number two is I had all this time just to focus on me and what yeah. I wanted and what I needed and what I wanted was to feel good about myself. It was never to be any, like, of course, I think we all have like that goal weight or size or whatever, but it yeah. was just to find the comfort with, with inside of myself. Um, but that's why it's been such a long journey because I, I say this all the time. I don't care how small I get. I still feel fat and uncomfortable. It, it's, it's really a mental, yeah. it's your mental state. Yeah. And it really has to start with healing from, you know, from the inside. So 2010, I really started going to the gym. I joined a weight loss company that really did help with the tracking and the education mm. that I needed. Yeah. You know, that was super huge and super great. And I was successful. I was very successful, but just six years later, I got diagnosed with gastroparesis, um, which is a paralysis of your digestive system. Yeah. And um, when I have flare ups, you cannot eat any fruit or vegetables. Really? What? Yes. And you have to have a low fiber diet. So there's no complex carbs. So it's white carbs and like, just junk food. Anything that's pre-processed is more easy for me to digest because digest, it's already yeah. processed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. And I had, I actually got really sick with gastroparesis. I needed, they did a procedure to help me with the gastroparesis and I ended up needing a feeding tube for three months. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like, it's like nonstop. Um, but then, you know, thank God I got a good doctor and, and, um, you know, there's re remission and relapses with that. But in 2017, I got pregnant and it was great and it was awesome, but it was a very, 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 very high risk pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. The gastroparesis came back and I put on weight, a lot of weight. I went back to um, 267 pounds. Oh, wow. Um, so I rejoined on my, because while I was pregnant, all I needed to do was focus on keeping my baby oh, alive and keeping me alive. So definitely. And I feel like not even just because you were a high risk pregnancy, I feel like with women in general, I remember, especially with my wife, like when you are like expecting and you're carrying and all that stuff, like, yes, you need to start, you need to focus on what I'm putting in my body. But I mean, it's a scary thing. Like me and my wife have talked about it even before of like because we have two perfectly beautiful healthy kids and we think all the time we're like are we done what's this and that and it's like it's just a scary thing now especially with how mm -hmm. the world is to be like 
or you know if we had another one or this or that and it's like mm -hmm. you so focus on you just want to get through those eight or nine months you know what i mean and, and yeah. get through so i totally understand that and i'm sure all the women of i took bites completely <laughs> Yes. Yes. You just do what you need to do. And I'm wow. like, I've done it before. It's okay. I'll do it again. So, um, December, 2017 is when I really, really focus. Oh, but before I got pregnant, you know, I was still doing well, but then I bloomed up. And then, so December of 2017, I rejoined on my weight loss journey at 267 pounds. I lost 75 pounds since then kept it totally off but for the most part yeah. <laughs> because um into so i am a recovering binge eater yes um and it's not just like cuz sometimes i feel that people throw that term around it's not i feel like almost anybody can sit down and eat a bag of chips so like i it, but it's not like that it yeah. is like I can have a hundred point day because I was at times tracking it. I can have no problem a hundred point day where I'm eating a hundred percent of the time of the day. There's no, there's no meal times. There's no nothing. I am just eating. And I do feel like the yo-yo dieting plus all this, oh, really over binge. I mean, like really, really yeah. binge eating restricting yourself it ruins your hunger signals there's no hunger signals i don't i didn't even know what hungry was um but it does ruin your metabolism uh, it, it does it does a lot of damage um to your body so even in 2017 because i am a recovering binge eater and i had to do what was the best for me i would be on program for a week and i would have a cheat day it wasn't a cheat meal. It was a cheat day, mm -hmm. um, but it did work for me because I loved the gym. I love the gym. I was yeah. in the gym eight hours a week. Like I would kill it. I was so stinking so strong. I was so right. gross. Yes, and, and but it worked for me. And even yeah. though my leader was like, it might not work for you forever. It was like okay, all right. But it worked for me at at the moment, and I did yeah. great, and I did wonderful. Well, um. February 2020, I um, severely broke my ankle and crushed my foot and ruptured my tendon. Oh my goodness. Well, no more gym. Yes. Hmm. And then a month later, I got severely, severely sick with COVID. Hmm. And I, it did a lot of damage um, to my heart, my nervous system, everything. I'm still not back in the gym. And this is over a year later. Yeah. I mean, but through all of this, I think what the most important thing for me is I think of I think of us as trees. And sometimes we have a season of pruning and yeah. it sucks to get things cut out of your life. Like maybe my first marriage, maybe my dad when he died when I was eight. M maybe it was the gym. Maybe it was, you know, even my weight loss journey when I was pregnant, I just had so many things cut out of my life. And, and we all go through those hardships in our life where we get things cut out of our life. And you know what? It freaking sucks. Yeah. But are you going to take that season of pruning and are you going to succumb to the pain that you're feeling from it? Are you going to say, you know what? I'm going to find some growth oh my in this goodness. season of pruning and I'm going to get stronger and I'm going to let my roots grow and I'm going to be steadier than ever and even though it sucked to lose the gym because that's what that was my thing that was yeah. my thing um and i did obviously i gained weight because of course i was had covid i was sick i had a broken ankle i'm just gonna eat all my so i, I gained probably 30 pounds uh during um the lockdown which i think a lot of people gained right yeah i mean but when you're when you're a binge eater and and i didn't have the gym and there was no movement and i could not breathe like I couldn't breathe a lot of the times. I am not doing a home workout. Like that's not happening. Yeah. I was passing out when I was standing up. Like, no, that's not happening. <laughs> um, but you know what? Um, when I lost the gym, I really learned how to find my food freedom when yeah. it came to my binge eating. 
I really had to refocus and reprioritize and say like, this is not going to knock me down. This is going to make me stronger. And I have really had like a, a lot of like epiphanies and um, there's no bad food. Like this is, this is my trick. If you're a binge eater, this is my trick. I know it sounds crazy. Nobody believes me, but trust me, I've been through it. So I know. My thing is Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> They're so good. How can you not love these? Do yeah. you love them, Jordan? I love them. Do you love them, them sis? I love right. them. You got to love Reese's. So bad. So for a while, I would not keep them in the house. Or I would have that one cheat day where I would eat everything I wanted for the week. I would just eat it all. I can gain seven pounds in a day. That's how bad my binge eating is. But I'm honest. Like, whatever yeah. it is, what it is. No, it. I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. Yes. Um, right? Uh, Venora, she loves Reese's too because they're so good. <laughs> um, you know what I did for an entire year? I had one snack size Reese's every stinking day before I went to sleep. It was before I went to sleep, so it wouldn't kind of get me started on like yeah. other food. Um, but it was my treat at the end of the day. And I, I tracked it, um, but I never felt like I had to overeat the Reese's because you know what? I'm going to have another one tomorrow, tomorrow. and another oh one God. tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day for the rest of my freaking life. I can have a Reese's every single day. I don't need to overeat it because I can have it every single day for the rest I mean, of my life. This is like, it takes, I'm yes. telling you. It oh takes, it takes away the need to want to overeat anything. I can have anything I want every single day of my life. Food is not the enemy. My mental state is the enemy. But once you eradicate that, it's fine. You're free. Oh my it's goodness. a beautiful thing. I'm mm -hmm. so glad this is recorded. Like, I am so glad this is going to be on the podcast. That right there. <laughs> was just like, you know, I've never been a binge eater. But now that you're saying it, like, when I did my first weight loss round back in like 2016, I got down to my lowest to goal. Um, I did the same thing. I, I ate on plan six days a week. Sunday was my off day. I went to church, you know, fellowship, all that stuff, eating galore. You know, I remember going to bed, like eating a bowl of cereal with a pop tart in it, like legit. Yes. That's why I was 26 years old. I'm not that age no more. But <laughs> it does, act, and it was because it was like, I wouldn't have that during the week. And so I felt like I had to get it all in in that day mm -hmm. to satisfy mm -hmm. myself to then be able to do it for six more days. To where right. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like y'all, if you want the donut, I have a donut every, I do know people that have donuts every single morning and still lose weight. Yep. Cause you know what? We're all that fit person inside of us. I, I, I always, I always, um, you know, Ben is a good friend of mine. I love Ben. I think he's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, but it's all about like this whole past year and a half. That's been like so difficult for me. Number one is about putting myself first. I'm a nurse or yeah. I, I just went back to nursing after I recovered. Thank God. Um, so I, I'm just like a natural giver. I just love people. I just love helping out people. I am so, I'm like the, I'm a very nice person. I kind of say so myself. I'm pretty nice. Um, but I am so mean to myself. I am yeah. so hard on myself. I tell myself things that I would never tell to anybody else. You really just have to find, I or I have found, the grace to forgive myself, to give myself the ability to move on. It's all about grace so you can move forward with love that you deserve. Oh, you guys yeah. all deserve love. Love, I, but if you if you hold on to your mistakes, you're not going to move forward. And we each have every moment is a new moment to be the best version of you. If you have that cereal and pop tart, enjoy yourself. 
guess what? This next second, you can do better. And if yeah. you don't do better, who cares? Your next second, you can be better. And sometimes you just need a pop tart with cereal. I'm all for that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, this is like revelation, honestly, is what it feels like. Oh, that's great. You're so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, like, where are you at right now? Like, you're all the way here. Like, how are you still doing it? Like, I, I like for real, for me, like today, I will, I tried pulling it up, but of course, because I'm like a person that my screen has to be perfect. So when somebody messages me, I click it done and it goes in the, in the, <laughs> yeah. so literally I got a message this morning from one of our members that was just like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what to do. I feel like I need to lose weight, but I just am so hard on myself. Pretty much this exact same thing. And I remember messaging her, giving her my story, you know what I mean? Just like I just told you. And then being like, but it took me now to be like, I can totally, I can totally do this for me and start focusing on myself and still give the same amount of focus to my wife and two kids. The same amount of focus to my mm -hmm. friends and family. But I can prioritize my health first now instead of putting it on mm -hmm. the back burner. And so just like you saying all mm -hmm. this stuff, Mary, it's just like, it just resonates it. It like puts it out there in the universe. Yes, yes. I, I always say, you know, like, and I, I tell this to everybody, you know what, the people who I give to, whether it be you know, I, I do home care um, patient pediatrics and I get really close to the family because like I'm in their house, I'm taking care of their child and I'm going to treat their child like my child. I mean, they're a child, like how can you love them? Of course. Um, but my friends, my family, people who I am giving to, you know what? They really love me back. And the best thing that I can do for them is to be the best version of me. Yeah. So they'll appreciate that. My my children want a happy mom. My husband wants a happy wife. And and what makes me happy is realizing that like I mean, I think we're all in a certain place in our journey, but for me right now, I'm okay with who I am and and where I am. I got really focused in my church and being really active in that and just like finding other priorities like my weight is a prior honestly my, I, it's sad to say no actually it's freedom that i've been looking for my weight is not top five priority anymore because you know what i am so much more than my pant size mm -hmm. yeah and that's okay and i can stick with that but at the same time it can still be a priority. I can still track my food and be accountable because you know what? My health trickles down to my children. My health trickles down to my family and all the get togethers I have at my house and, and making better food for them. And you know, they see that happiness through like throughout it all. But if I have a a trash week like somebody used last week at the meeting I was like that's awesome I'm gonna use that <laughs> if I have a trash week uh eating wise that's okay because I'm yeah. still awesome and I still did like 80 other thousand good things and okay I'll just have a better week like yeah. big deal move on give yourself the grace move on and sometimes you have to like refine your why yeah. If, if, if I'm really struggling, if I'm really struggling and packing on the pounds, which can happen, mm -hmm. sometimes I have to say, I have, to, well, why am I doing this? Sometimes it's for me. Sometimes it's so I'm a better role model for my children. Sometimes it's so I can feel comfortable again because I have a genetic disorder that is hard on my joints. So if yeah. I, when I'm heavier, of course, like I have, uh, like, bilateral uh, knee arthritis that's pretty pretty severe um, yeah. and I can't get um, replacements because I have a misalignment it's a genetic thing yeah um, so when I'm heavier I can feel more achy it, it's not about looking great or looking good because you know even when I had the feeding tube and I couldn't eat and I was thin and, and malnourished I still felt bigger than I feel now because it's all in your head oh yeah 
Yeah. But in your one, head. Yeah, the la like one of the best quotes, lyrics, whatever, can't remember who it was from, but it was literally like, if you can't love, then you can't love yourself. And that kind of like goes with what you're saying of, you know, you have to love others to be able to love yourself. So you can't be this bottle up person that you hate the world, hate yourself, feel like you're stuck. Like you need to start letting it go, putting it out there, getting the support system, figuring out who your iTrack Bites bestie is and yes. you know, messaging them every day and all that stuff. Like you have to be able to do that to be able to love yourself and get to where you are. Because I tell our members every single day, I don't care if you don't lose another pound the rest of your journey, the rest of your life, you need to love where you're at. And eventually you'll get to where you want to be. It might take you 10 years, mm -hmm. but you're always going to remember, like, I never gave up. It was just a yeah. stumbling block in the road. Yeah. And the biggest, the biggest weight that you can lose probably won't even be on the scale. It'll probably, like for me, my biggest weight that I lost was my self judgment of my body. Yeah. Because you know what? When you lose 140, see ya. <laughs> when you lose 143 pounds, even though it took obviously a long time, yeah. um, there's a lot of extra skin. There's never, I'm not going to be that same size yeah. 10 that, you know, was just born a size 10 and maybe not born, but you know, like that's, that's who they are. Like I'm going to have a lot of, extra stuff to love and that's okay i'm fine with that love it love it mary real quick because we're almost running out of time i have two questions for you i always ask our members um number one so you've lost 140 something pounds you're at where you're at in your journey but what is something that you wish what is something that you know now that you wish you would have knew back in 2012 2013 when you whenever you first started what is something you know now that you're like, man, I wish myself, I would have knew that back in the beginning. That I literally, okay, okay. That I literally could have a recess every single day and still lose weight and still be healthy. I am, I am like, when you're heavy, when you're a chunky <laughs> and you're looking at that skinny person who's eating a donut every day, and you're like, how the heck are they still skinny? Because they're not eating six donuts. Yeah. And my husband's like a fit person and he would, and he would like during my cheat day, which number one, don't give me any advice about my food. Like I got this. Okay. Yeah. Don't eat. <laughs> all right. But he would be like, you can spread all this food that you're saving up for one day. You can spread it out during the week. And I'm like, you don't know me. I'm a binge eater. If I start eating this, I'm going to keep on eating. Blah, 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 blah. And I wasn't at that point in my journey, but like, I wish I would have discovered it sooner because it really is the food freedom that I needed yeah. to just move on. And, and like, if it's not, I, I typically, I will give myself six points at the end of the night for a treat. Sometimes I have the whole six, sometimes I don't, but I take three from the daily and I'm sorry, three, six bites. <laughs> <laughs> I, I save I save enough I save some for my daily and some from the weekly that I take out mm -hmm. um just so I can have that whether it be popcorn or Reese's I'm I'm a sweets person so like yeah. I need sweets most of the time it's ice cream or something like that or I make some really delicious um cake bowls that are so filling and so delicious and um but I wish that I could eat whatever I wanted every single day eventually it might start some cravings and things like that i understand it was a process but it is totally totally Doable. worth it i can eat like a skinny girl <laughs> i can do that <laughs> love that Act like yes i'm we're going to trademark that that you can have a reason <laughs> every, day. Love it. every right. single day the rest of your life Yes. So Mary, the final question I always ask is there is, so we've had so many people on the live tonight. They're sending messages, you know, they're commenting all this stuff. This is going to go on the podcast later on today or this week on Friday. Um, this is actually going to go, we now do it on YouTube on uh, Wednesdays. That's totally awesome. Like this will be there. There's going to be so many stinking people that are going to listen to this. 
And there's going to be somebody out there that is so wanting to do this. They're just like, I'm there. I'm where you were, Mary, but I just can't do it. What do you want to tell them? Like to get them to do it, like to get them to start, just to start. Give yourself the grace to move on forward from your past and just start. Believe in yourself because honest, I know people say it all the time, but I have had like a really tumultuous ride and, and a long ride and ups and downs. But honestly, if I can do it, so could you. You just have to give yourself the grace to move on to the next moment. Some days it's moment by moment and hold on to the good things and just love yourself enough to move forward. Love it. That was such good advice, Mary. I loved it. Thank you Thank so you. much. Mary, this Thank was you. awesome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I've been super excited to have you on. Um, Thank you so much. It did not disappoint. And I know no one, like everybody's going to listen to this and they're going to love it. So thank you so much, Mary. And thank glad you. I can now call you friend. Uh, yes. I think, I think we were like a stranger at birth. Like we are friends. Yes, we <laughs> are friends. So I love it. Thank you so much, Mary. And I'll talk to you thank later. Thank you. Okay? And thanks to everybody who, um, who was watching and who commented. I'm definitely going to go back and, and try to read everybody. And, and um, feel free to um, follow me on Instagram. And I, I will always answer a private message or a direct message because we are all in this together. Like we are all going through the same thing. I don't care where you are in your journey. We're all in this together and, and I will always answer you. So Love thank it. you so much. Thanks, Mary. Talk to you soon. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. If you are watching this on the replay, go ahead and put hashtag replay down in the comments. Go ahead and share this. You know, when you get off of here, go back and share it to all your friends and family. That was a phenomenal interview. That was so much great advice. Um, so happy that we were able to have her on there. And I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Go ahead and catch us next week, Tuesdays, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you haven't already and haven't heard, Head on over to Eventbrite, look up iTrack Bites. Every Monday, we have 50 free open spots to our member meeting with Coach Men. Go ahead, get your uh, link. You know, we do it all. It all launches every Friday afternoon. You will not be disappointed. Until next time, my name's Jordan, your iTrack Bites community manager, and I will catch up with you guys next week.